Hi, Sage here from Keeper. In today's video, we're gonna be covering Keeper's final review section. This is where you can review your client's financial statements and key management reports. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date on all future releases. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions or send us a message using the purple widget in the bottom right corner. And then lastly, check out the description of this video so you can find helpful links and resources covering today's topic. Let's dive in. The purpose behind the final review section in Keeper is to help you review your financial statements like the P&L and balance sheet to spot trends in the data, detect discrepancies in the ledger, and flag accounts that deviate significantly from their historical averages, making it a whole lot easier to identify potential coding errors or actual business changes. Now, the way you get to the final review section in Keeper is really easy. All you're gonna do is click on the client you wanna work with, and you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of your close page. From here, you're gonna find the final review section, and I'm gonna move myself to the side so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Here, you're gonna find some additional reports to work through, like the P&L and the balance sheet. But quick note here, depending on whether the client you selected is a QBO or zero connected client, will determine some of the reports available to you and their functionality. And if you wanna learn more about that, just navigate to the Help Center using the purple widget in the bottom right corner. As a reminder, the Keeper Close page is where you and your team can run your month end close and manage your work. Now the final review section, which we're about to get into, is not client facing. But if you do find things you want to ask them about, you can always add specific questions about transactions to the portal from this final review. And additionally, after you've run your final review, you're gonna be able to build out management reporting packages in the reporting section of Keeper that you can publish to your clients. That's something we're gonna review in our next video. For today's video, we're gonna focus primarily on the profit and loss sheet. So we're going to click on that report, it will expand and we're gonna scroll down. Now you have some navigation options on top if you wanna edit the time frame, hide variances, or edit or expand any of the information down below. But we're gonna dive right in talking about the three key aspects of this report. So the first aspect is variance flagging. Now, the system's automatically going to flag accounts that deviate significantly from the historical averages, which is going to help you identify potential coding errors or genuine business changes to tell your clients about. And you can see that right here in the middle of the report. The formula that we use for these variances is the current close period versus the average of the preceding or trailing months. So for instance, if you're in the September month end close, which we currently are in, as you can see, looking at the top corner of my page, and your scope is a three month review, which we currently have set as the default, it's gonna compare September to the average of the two months that came before, which would be July and August. Now, if you were to adjust the time frame or scope of this report to a six month overview, you're gonna see that the numbers change. So I'm gonna click into the drop down, select six months, and rerun the report. And now we can see that not only have the variances changed, but we can see that additional columns representing the months that we've added are now here as well. So now what it's doing is it's comparing September to the average of the five months that came before it, which would be April through August. Please note that in order for a variance to appear, there needs to be a difference of 20% and $100 in order for Keeper to flag it either in a red color or a green color. Now, in this case, red and green don't mean up and down. Instead, it means good or bad, depending on the account that we're looking at. So for example, if we're looking at one of these income accounts and the variances are red, that means that we didn't perform as well or didn't make as much income. Now, if we were to look at an expense account, so if we scroll down and we see that the variances are in green, that means that we saved money and didn't spend as much as we have in the past, which would be a good thing. So the second aspect of this report is the drill down capabilities. And this is one of the main benefits of the report, its ability to drill down from the account level all the way to individual transaction levels, allowing for detailed analysis of financial data. So if you wanna take a deeper look into any of the accounts, you're simply gonna click on it and it's gonna show you a vendors by spend report filtered by that account. So for an example, let's scroll down and take a look at the meals account. From here, we can notice that there's actually something that is missing a vendor. So what we can do is click on the vendor itself and we can actually interact with that transaction right from here. So we can notice that the description is for GoPuff. So what we'll do next is we'll click into the vendor box and we'll actually search for GoPuff and we'll assign the vendor right from here. And that of course is going to sync right from Keeper back into QuickBooks or Xero. Now, another example could be you are taking a look at the report and you notice some of the variances. So in this case, property insurance, we wanna take a deeper dive into it, but we notice that something's here that maybe shouldn't, in this case, Etsy. 
I didn't know that Etsy offered property insurance. So odds are we have to take a bit of a deeper look here. We'll click on it, but we notice, okay, the description actually is Rocket Mortgage. So in this case, we can change the vendor from what it was, Etsy, to Rocket Mortgage. And that again is also going to update right from Keeper to QuickBooks or Zero. Now, a third example would be recategorizing the transaction itself. So let's say we're taking a look at softwares and apps and we want to take a deeper dive into Alibaba. We can always change it from softwares and subscriptions to something else just by interacting with the split column. We can also use the purple arrow on the left-hand side to take a look at some historical transactions and use that information to help us decide if there's something in the past that we need to make a change to or if we want to change the original transaction that we were looking at right on top. Now we can also communicate with the client directly from here as well. So if we had a question about one of these Alibaba expenses, we can easily scroll to the right and ask the client a question. We could always write out our own question or use one of the templates like asking for more info or even a receipt and uploading it right to the portal. Remember, you still need to notify the client that there's something in the portal either manually or using the automatic reminders, which you can set up in your practice settings. Now, the last example I want to highlight is how you can communicate with your team internally. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and for me, the merchant fees stands out. So I'm going to click into merchant fees and I can see that these are Shopify fees. But I notice that we are missing some charges for April, for July and for September. So what I can do is I can hover my mouse over the account and I can actually click on the comments button and from here, I can add a new comment using the at symbol, tag someone on my team, ask them a question. In this case, why are we missing some of the monthly charges for these merchant fees? And they're gonna get notified. They'll be able to respond and update me. That way I know exactly what's going on. And just like that, we're gonna call it here. That's the basics of this final review section. So once you've gone through the P&L, the balance sheet, and any of the other reports, you're gonna mark them off. And then you'll be able to navigate to this top left corner click on the reporting tab and start to put together an end of the month package that you can share with your clients. But that's something that we'll dive more into on the next episode. So with that, make sure to like this video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all future releases. If you got comments, leave them in the comment section below or use the purple widget in the bottom right corner to ask us a question and check out the description of this video so you can stay up to date on all future releases. With that, I'll see you guys in the next one.